At this time, we're going to remember the Lord Jesus as he taught his disciples to do by taking bread, which represents his body, and drinking from a cup, which represents his blood, proclaiming his death until he comes. His death was paid, paid the penalty for our sin, and it also paid the ransom to redeem us from sin to his family. By partaking, we, we are saying that he purchased us. We belong to him. If you've not been redeemed, we ask that you not partake of this remembrance. Let's let the, blood, the, uh, the bread and the cup pass from you and uh, listen and consider that the death of Christ, though, is the only provision that God has made for you to be redeemed. God has made, has made uh, the, the only provision, and we will consider this morning a passage of Scripture uh, in, in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand. Somebody will see that you get one. And uh, as you, uh, if you don't uh, own a Bible, take it home. This is yours to read. Take it home and, and do read it. We're going to look at uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. These describe the great step of humiliation taken by the Son of God when he became a man in order to save us. Follow along as I read Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being found, being made in the likeness of man. Being found in appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This passage is setting forth the Lord Jesus as an example of an attitude that we are to have as we follow him. He humbled himself to become our savior. We must humble ourselves to serve him. A major difference between Jesus and us is that his starting point is from a point much higher than we will ever attain. He existed in the form of God and he stooped to the lowest uh, form of existence of man. He stooped to uh, a criminal's death. Although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself. How did he empty himself? By taking on the form of a slave, by becoming in the likeness of men. Not that he exchanged the form of God for the form of man, but he manifested the form of God in the form of a slave. He did not give up any of his deity when he became a man. He was emptying himself, not by subtraction, but by addition. By becoming a man, he laid aside some of his divine privileges, the glory he had with the Father, to live a perfect human life, to live in dependence upon his Father, to rub shoulders with fallen men. Then being found in the likeness of a man, he further humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. He always sought to do the Father's will. His death on the cross was, for the, purpose, was the purpose for which he came to, to die for men. Death by crucifixion was a penalty that was reserved for criminals and the lower classes of people. It was a, the most degrading form of death that the Romans used. Under the law, Moses said that the one that was hanging on a tree was considered to be cursed of God. Jesus suffered the penalty for the worst of sinners, as well as for many who people would look at and say are, are really pretty good people. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because Jesus so humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
The question is, will you do so now or will you wait until you appear before him at the end of your life? If you do not bow the knee now, and you will confess him, you will bow before him someday. The only thing is, if you wait till the end of your life, when you meet him, it is too late to be saved. If you have bowed the knee to the Lord Jesus, remember what he has done for you to bring you into his family. When you have received the bread and the cup, please uh, hold on to it. We'll partake of it together. If you have not bowed the knee or confessed Jesus as Lord, please let these pass by you. Someone will be up here at the front on your left to, uh, to, to pray with you, to speak with you at the end of the service. We'd welcome you to come and do so. Men, come and serve us at this time.